Coming up, crews in western Kettleland were kept busy with several fires yesterday. We have an update on the grass fire near Lemon, South Dakota. Plus, we talk with fans about not being able to cheer on their teams from the stands for this year's Summit League tournament. Good morning, this is Kettle Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. As blizzard-like conditions blow through Kettle Land, Max Ofer is out there with an update on how things are going. Good morning, Max. Good morning, you two. Yeah, we got a bit of a different angle this morning. I'm joined by uh, Kelloland photographer Tori Stolen, and we thought we would give you an idea of what the roads look like out here. Right now, we're on North 60th Street going west into town. We just came from the east where we were seeing several whiteout conditions, and you could hardly identify cars unless it was just by their headlights. Uh, Tori will turn it to the road here for you to show you that the road still has a bit of snow over it. Uh, the snow is not coming down as hard, but it's really the wind that's blowing a lot of it uh, over the road here and making it tough to to keep steady. I actually have a car that's directly behind me and he's keeping about a good uh, car length distance from me because you want to take these roads uh, really slow today. I believe the uh, the speed limit on this one is like 45 and I'm going about 25 so a little less than that just so I don't you know speed or slide or slip around too much. As you can see the uh, the gusts are coming through kicking over the roads. Uh, right here is kind of what I'm talking about a bit of a, a white out there um, and we've been seeing plows come through trying to clear the roads too. They've been making the rounds uh, to make the roads salty and safe to drive on. And we've actually seen a surprising amount of cars on this road, too, coming uh, going into town as well. So uh, the, I talked to a state trooper earlier this morning. He recommends that if uh, you not drive on the road unless you absolutely have to, unless it's an absolute necessity for you, but otherwise uh, just you know stay at home where it's safe, uh, make sure you bundle up, uh, make, remember to keep the important things in your car, like uh, gloves, hat, blanket, uh, jumper cables in case your car battery dies somewhere. Uh, right now we're just crossing the overpass over I-229 here. Uh, got more cars coming at us. Um, yep, and so pretty much the general conditions are getting a little better now, but uh, still in some spots are a little sketchy. But right now I'm going to send it right back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks a lot, Max. Now let's send it over to meteorologist Scott Munt in the Storm Center for the latest on this round of winter weather. Good morning, Scott. Well, good morning, you two. Good morning, Kebbell Land. Looks like our strong winds will continue throughout the morning and into the afternoon before slowly starting to die down as we hit the, we'll say, late afternoon hours and heading into the evening. Now, with that time frame, that's the reason why these uh, blizzard warnings do expire at 6 o'clock this evening, covering northeastern South Dakota and Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. And then we have a winter weather advisory in southeastern South Dakota. It's out until 3 o'clock this afternoon. And we are looking at uh, conditions set to improve late today. And that trend will continue into the weekend. More details with that with Brian Karstens coming up. Thank you, Scott. Strong winds started blowing across Kelloland yesterday as another blast of winter weather moved in, which made travel extremely dangerous in some areas. Take a look at this. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office posted this picture on Facebook of a semi tipped over in the median. The Highway Patrol says it's a similar sign across the state. Troopers are asking people to use caution when transporting lightly loaded trailers and high profile vehicles. The high winds also made it a busy afternoon for firefighters in central South Dakota as they work to put out a wind driven grass fire north of Pier. The Hughes County Emergency Manager says the fire has burned an estimated 350 acres of cropland and 80 acres of grass, but has not damaged any homes or buildings. The fire is about 90% contained. Strong northwest winds drove smoke from the fire into the capital city and caused visibility issues miles downriver from Oahe Dam. Hours after firefighters in Pier got a large grass fire under control, they were at the scene of an apartment fire. It happened at one of the three-story apartment buildings in the Edgewater complex. The high winds also made getting the flames under control a big challenge. The building was deemed a complete loss. One firefighter received minor injuries and crews stayed on the scene until early this morning to watch for flare-ups. Firefighters in Perkins County are fighting a large grass fire west of Lemon. Take a look at these pictures we got from Lori Drayton. Flames from the fire were turning the night sky red and orange. Shortly after 4.30 yesterday afternoon, crews with the Lemon Fire Department were called to reports of a major grass fire northwest of Lemon in Adams County, North Dakota. Winds at the time of the call were sustained at 30 to 40 miles per hour and gusted as high as 56 miles per hour. Officials say the fire traveled over 20 miles through and around 19 farms and ranches. It's estimated that 10,000 acres were burned. 
Two firefighters were hurt during the fire and were taken to a local hospital for treatment. Fire crews say they expect the fire to be out sometime today. Highway 12 to the North Dakota border as well as Highway 73 between Somerville and Lemon were closed due to the fire but are now both open. In other news this morning, the COVID-19 pandemic has organizers of this year's Summit League basketball tournament making big changes to keep teams safe. The league announced to, uh, yesterday that the tournament will be moved from the Denny Sanford Premier Center to the Sanford Pentagon and that no fans will be allowed inside. The league's commissioner says they wanted to err on the side of caution, even though it will mean a big financial hit for the league and its 16 men's and women's teams. You know, we were able to help pay travel expenses for, for our teams, and obviously that's not going to happen. And when you're flying in from Tulsa, you know, 44 people, and, uh, you know, those, those uh, uh, expenses add up. Commissioner Tom Dupal says total losses could run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but he says it will be worth it for the sake of protecting the student-athletes competing in the tournament. Fans we talked with say they are disappointed, but they understand. For many local fans, it's a time to reconnect with old friends, and for others, the tournament has become a family affair. It's a place where all Jackrabbit fans can come together. It's a place where fans from all schools can come together um, and just kind of be at the summit and enjoy our athletes and our sports. I'm disappointed uh, that we won't be able to allow, you know, in the stands. But again, I understand, um, you know, with COVID, I understand the reasoning behind it, support the Summit League. Um, you know, and finally, just want to say go Yotes. The Summit League tournament takes place March 6th through the 9th. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last check of your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right. Uh, several headlines today continue for blowing snow, falling snow, and of course the wind too. We've got winter weather advisories for Sioux Falls until 3. That's this grouping of counties in blue and extending to uh, Laverne, Rock Rapids. And then you go east. You even go north to Watertown. We're still going to have blizzard headlines today due to the combo of snow and wind and uh, occasional whiteout conditions. That also includes Sioux City. So that's uh, the latest here, the thinking on that. Peak wind gusts uh, even here in the last 12 to 18 hours have been 60 plus west of Mitchell. And yeah, that's a lot of wind. So high wind warnings are also in effect for a lot of the counties not getting the snow in central Kettle Lamb. Now, as we move forward in the forecast, the winds are staying strong most of the day. Uh, and I mean by that basically 40 plus, even 50 plus at times in Sioux Falls. Rotation of snow pivoting around that area of low pressure to our east. So that's why those blizzard warnings have to stay up here uh, throughout the balance of the early afternoon because the winds are still peaking over 40 and there's still some snow in the air. Now, we do expect the winds to taper off tonight, so that's good. Radar coverage looks less. There may be some additional flurries coming back to the west, but even there, the temperature tomorrow in Rapid City will be in the 40s, but you'll increase wind again there in Rapid City, probably gusting to 40 or better. Not like this last system, but still a little breezy. Well, wind gusts again here as we've looked this morning, 40 to 50, pretty common. And again, uh, the forecast is looking Fairly, uh, I would say, mild, relatively speaking. It's just the wind has a bite to it with those 30 and uh, to 50 mile an hour winds. Highs today, again, a lot of those 30s out there, West River. Seven day forecast, it looks like on track here for highs into the 30s for early next week. And there could be some additional light snow in the region by Monday. It also includes uh, Aberdeen and the Northeast, some 30 degree weather. So still not bitterly cold. We don't have to worry about that just yet. Keep an eye on the last week of January. That's kind of what we've been watching to see how this thing unfolds. Rapid City 2 jumps back to 44 on Sunday. Check out our Storm Center update and more details online at kettleland.com.